Good morning. Over the last year, even as Lincoln City Government has focused on the health and safety and well-being of our community, work on our residents' other priorities has continued full steam ahead. And this includes important work on our city streets. Lincoln Transportation and Utilities, or LTU, has continued to invest in infrastructure and services that keep our city literally moving forward and that now fuel our economic recovery. And anyone who has driven around the city lately has probably noticed street improvements that have just been completed or are in progress. And those orange cones and detours demonstrate our ongoing commitment to build safer and smoother streets many of which are getting done thanks to the voter-approved Lincoln on the Move Street Investment Initiative. Lincoln on the Move is currently in the second year of a six-year initiative anticipated to provide $78 million of street improvements across our community. And of that total, 73.5%, or what we estimate will add up to about $57 million, will be used for repair, improvements, and construction of neighborhood and arterial street projects in existing areas of our city. 25% helps build streets in new growth areas, and the remaining 1.5%, or about $1.17 million, will help fund a portion of the North 33rd and Cornhusker Highway Railroad Intersection Betterment Project. That project of the Railroad Transportation Safety District will improve safety and traffic flow up in that area of our town. This community effort improves the streets we drive on and our quality of life. The investments also support job creation, public safety, education, healthcare, sustainability, and economic growth. And these important road projects lay the infrastructure to help our community thrive. Throughout this Lincoln on the Move initiative, which is slated to last through the year 2025, each street project will go through a careful selection process with the guidance and oversight of the Advisory Committee on Transportation, also known as the ACT. And this committee offers valuable input for the program's implementation. Since the program began, seven major Lincoln on the Move street projects have been completed. The South 48th Street project opened to traffic just over a week ago, nearly two months early. And this project, um, from just north of Highway 2 to Pioneers Boulevard included a new smooth surface and updated school zone crossings and signals. Other completed street projects include those in the Havelock neighborhood and Southwood neighborhoods and near Zeman Elementary, as well as portions of North 70th Street, South 40th Street, and Van Doren Street. LTU Director Elizabeth Elliott is here today to update us on projects that are underway and what we can expect will get done this summer. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Mayor. Lincoln Transportation and Utilities is busy with a variety of projects across the city. LTU provides safe drinking water, wastewater management, sustainable material solutions, flood management, transit services, and transportation infrastructure to the community. Our services are essential and offer great value to neighbors and visitors every single day. Lincoln on the Move street projects are another important service that enhances our city. Currently, the city has five projects in the construction phase, and this map shows where our teams and partners are currently working across the city. The Capitol Beach Neighborhood Street Improvement Project is just a few weeks away from completion. Through this project, we resurfaced five different areas in the neighborhood, and crews are putting the final touches on those streets now. We are paving West Holdridge Street from Northwest 48th to Northwest 56th Streets. This project will provide enhanced safety to the families who will be traveling to the Northwest High School. It will also will help connect many residents, including more than 700 tenants in a future apartment complex, to commercial space and opportunity for local growth nearby. We are also making improvements to one of the most traveled and prominent streets in Lincoln, South 9th Street from I-180 to A Street will soon be resurfaced in a mill and overlay process. 
This will increase its longevity and provide smoother driving surface. Right now, teammates are upgrading the sidewalks along this area to meet ADA standards. Drivers will see the preparation for some lane closures along South 9th Street in the coming weeks. The street will continue to remain open at all times for travelers. You can expect the 9th Street Lincoln on the move street improvement project to be wrapped up right before Husker football season. We're making rapid progress and over the summer months we have plans to begin even more Lincoln on the Move street project construction. As you see on this map, we are scheduled to break ground on 10 additional street projects in June, July, and August. Those include upcoming projects in the Kohler Middle School and Seven Oaks neighborhoods. Lincoln residents can expect a total of 20 street projects to happen this second year of Lincoln on the Move initiative. This street program has and will continue to provide value to many Lincoln residents. I'm happy to report funding for the program is exceeding expectations despite the pandemic. This is yet another sign of rejuvenation for our community. In the first year of the program, October 2019 through September 2020, the quarter cent sales tax collection totaled $13.9 million. In this second year, the city estimates, estimates that the revenue will be $14 million. All Lincoln on the Move funds go directly toward street improvement and growth projects. The full list of the Lincoln on the Move project is available at streets.lincoln.ne.gov. Thank you, Mayor. Well, thank you, Director Elliott, and to everyone at LTU for all your hard work. Um, we continue to make investments in our street system to improve traffic safety and flow. And as a part of that work, our team has developed an updated design for the intersection of South 14th, Warlick Boulevard, and Old Cheney Road. A previous proposal for an elevated roundabout at this intersection had been projected to cost $44 million. And the updated, simpler design that we'll be talking about today provides increased traffic safety and capacity through the year 2045 at a much lower cost of $26 million. The city has con conducted a full analysis of all types of configurations for the large intersection and developed a cost-effective solution that fits within our existing budget. The new design converts the current five-way signalized intersection into a simplified design that still improves safety. And this project includes new sidewalks and pedestrian connections, increased traffic flow by moving more cars in less time through the area, additional capacity to serve more vehicles, drainage improvements, traffic signal improvements, and trail crossing improvements. The updated intersection design will also be able to accommodate area growth and business access and provide a functional cost-effective solution that serves Lincoln now and into the future. And now I'd like to introduce Lincoln Transportation Utilities Senior Transportation Engineer, Daniil Vockel, who has more details about the updated new intersection design. Welcome, Daniil. Thank you, Mayor. We continue to see a growing need to expand the capacity of the intersections at South 14th, Warlick, and Old Cheney. Right now, the improvement project is in the early stages of design and construction. The $26.4 million project is expected to be completed in 2025. The project is a financially feasible option for the city as our community focuses on economic recovery. Funds will, become, will come from the city's capital improvement project that is funded by a variety of sources, including highway allocation funds, street improvement, vehicle tax revenue, and impact fees. LTU has allocated $11.9 million to this project and intends to program an additional $14.4 million in future years. The public involvement has been a key component of this project since 2012. The Lincoln community has helped identify priorities and goals for this project. Through the years, discussion included the possibility of building an elevated roundabout at this location. That elevated roundabout design turned out to be nearly double the cost of the updated intersection design, which will still produce similar benefits. 
The updated intersection design will offer a greater return on taxpayer investment and increase traffic capacity. It is a more affordable option that more closely aligns with the available budget. The next steps include selecting an engineering firm to begin the design. We are excited to move forward with this safe, long-term solution for Lincoln. For more information on this project, you can go to 14thOldChaney.com. Mayor? I have this habit of standing so far apart, we don't really need to do that anymore. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, um, Ms. Vockel. Uh, the city is committed to cost-effective solutions that benefit our entire community, and as design and construction progress, stakeholders and the public will have opportunities to learn more about the project and its process going forward. Travel through the area and access to businesses and neighborhoods will be maintained at all times, and at this point, we would be happy to take any questions from the media. Any questions? Do we have a question? Okay, Matt's asking a question. We'll get you, get the volume turned up here, Matt. Go ahead. Yeah, so do you guys have any other details on the 14th and Old Cheney project? I mean, you said it won't be an elevated roundabout, but are there any details on what it will be or, or what the design will be like? Sure, I'll, I'll ask the LT to come back up. Thank you. I think at this point, we're going to be asking um, consultants to bring forward options that include a more simplified design. Those types of things would include a normal intersection uh, with traffic signals. Um, we're not anticipating any sort of um, maybe roundabouts at this time or any sort of elevation or uh, changes that way. Uh, this is Brent with Channel 8. I believe you said the projected finish date would be 2025. Do you know when you would start? Yeah, at this time, I think we're expecting it to take two years for construction. So construction would start in 2024 and continue through the end of 2025. Any further questions? Oh, we do have one. Yes, Andrew. Was it just cost or, you know, that, that made you decide to go with this other design or, you know, mm -hmm. was, was the roundabout, I guess what are the reasons that you guys have for, for changing this particular design? Well, I think cost was the major factor. It was a really significant um, price tag that came in when we bid out the previous design and we had to stop and reassess because it, we didn't have that figure budgeted. So uh, faced with that set of circumstances, we went back to the drawing table, literally, and started exploring how can we still improve safety? How can we still uh, make the most of this complicated intersection for our residents? Uh, and you know, it, it won't have all the bells and whistles, but we think it'll get the job done. Was public feedback pretty important as far as, was the public feedback just about cost or was it about mm -hmm. confusion? I think um, I'll, I'll let the department speak to that in more detail, but generally speaking, um, I just want to say that public feedback has been critical to this process. We know that this affects a lot of commuters. It affects businesses in that area. And so uh, one of the reasons this, pro this project is so complex is trying to make sure that we are addressing the needs of many different users and stakeholders. Um, did you want to speak? Okay. Just wanting to add what the mayor uh, was just mentioning is that public engagement and the stakeholders' input is vital to this project, and we will continue to work with stakeholders on this. Uh, we have reached out to the stakeholders to notify them of these proposed changes. Once we get a final proposed design, we'll continue to work and engage the public on what they would like to see. When we looked at this, we were looking to all of the same goals that the public had indicated early on back at, before the competition stages, and that was uh, increased safety 
increased multimodal transportation, so accommodating pedestrians and bicyclists, as well as increasing capacity and hopefully minimizing the complexities of that intersection. So when we went back to the drawing board, um, this kind of basic at grade intersection improvements fit all of those requirements that we heard from the public. And we think this is a solution that will work for everyone. Any other questions? Right. Hi, Liz. This is Matt Alberti again. I have. Th this is kind of um, outside the scope of what you guys are talking about, but I thought I would uh, <laughs> ask about it now since you're there. Um, what kind of issues have you guys seen with the heat in terms of roads? I heard that 84th Street, South 84th Street, had to be closed because it kind of buckled. Um, have you guys been seeing that around the city? Spike in temperature definitely has. Uh, created some challenges, but it's not out of the ordinary. But because, Matt, we were anticipating you might have these questions, I actually brought in the expert Tim Byrne from uh, Street Maintenance Operations. So I'll invite Tim up and he can provide more details. Hey, thank you. Morning, Matt. As Liz mentioned, this isn't out of the ordinary. Anytime we see uh, temperature spikes to this degree, we anticipate uh, some buckling of our pavements, usually about time we hit the upper teens or 120 degrees on our surface temps is when we start to see that. Uh, our streets go through a lot of expansion and contraction throughout the year. Uh, I did pull some readings from yesterday from some of our pavement sensors. Uh, <clears throat> a couple of our locations, excuse me, topped out about 132.9 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday at surface temps. Bridges were running to three to four degrees cooler than that uh, in the early morning bottoming out about 76.6 degrees so uh, we're about a 56 degree swing just on yesterday alone that's a lot of expansion and contraction uh, in those streets and some of those locations just depending on the particular design topography uh, stresses that are on those panels there's just not a lot of room for the expansion to go and it takes the path of least resistance which tends to be upward can you kind of explain what happens there with the heat? Sure. As the pavement warms up, the materials in it expand. And as it expands, it grows. So it grows laterally and longitudinally. Uh, longitudinal tends to be where we get that most compression because of the linear nature of the street. It just runs out of places to go. Uh, so it will tend to buckle, which can either be uh, a potentially uh, weak spot in the pavement at a contraction joint that has been sawed to accommodate for some of that expansion contraction. Uh, and it just needs to find a way out and it's the path of least resistance. Has it caused any accidents yet or any, any um, road hazards uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, motives? Uh, I'm not aware of any, any hazards at this point in time. Uh, the good news is when they do occur, uh, we become aware of them very quickly. Uh, citizens give us a call or uh, might call in to 911, let them know about it, and we're able to dispatch staff very quickly to get the road closed. And, and do you guys have enough funds to, to you know, patch all these things up, and then how quickly will those repairs be made? Uh, repairs are being started as we speak. Uh, right now we uh, are eyeballing about eight different uh, repair locations that have shown up. Uh, again, that's kind of normal for this sort of weather with us. Uh, and the repairs get made by our city forces, our street maintenance crews, and this is part, part of our uh, resources and funding that we use to maintain uh, the road network year round. And, and with the forecast coming up, I mean, how concerned are you that this is going to increase? We're we're going to keep our eyes on it. Today's forecast to be warmer than yesterday, so we might see a few more pop up again today. The, the longer the heat wave and the dry weather continues, uh, the more it can exacerbate the conditions. So we do keep an eye on it. Uh, hopefully, uh, with the locations that have shown up, those were the locations that were the, the weak link, so to speak, maybe under the most stress. So uh, maybe we got the worst ones out of the way for us. And this doesn't have any indication on the quality of the road or, you know, the, the age of the road, does it? It does. It's not indicative of the quality of the road. Um, 
pavements go under a lot of stress from traffic, environmental conditions. Uh, some of our pavements are very, very old. They've served us well for many years. Um, I would consider this part of uh, expected maintenance that um, we, we encounter to maintain and operate a transportation system. Um, for example, if I look back over six months, we had, a, we had an exceptionally cold winter as well. Uh, so our pavements after yesterday's uh, high of 132.9, uh, they were negative 14.7 within the last six months. Uh, that's nearly 150 degree swing in temperatures. So um, I'd say they're holding up very well under those uh, conditions. Um, Kennedy from 1011 has a question. Is there any way to avoid the roads buckling like that in the future? Um, <clears throat> Yes, the roads we build today are not built the same way that we used to build roads. Uh, chemists and engineers around the world are always uh, looking for new materials and designs to build better roadways, use more robust materials that can account for these expansion and contractions. Uh, to, and so I would say yes, we, we are accounting for that um, just globally in our design as we build a better transportation infrastructure. policy that you're, you're trying to pursue. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much of, of this is, is why, you know, how much would that help, you know, these particular situations like this? Hmm. Is, that, is that a factor in, in why you, you want to have, a, you know, some type of climate? Well, the, I mean, the goal of the Climate Action Plan is to help us have a stronger and more resilient community. And that involves strengthening infrastructure and helping to ensure that we are leaving this community better than we found it. So that's sort of the foundational principles. And to the extent that we encourage um, not only increased efficiencies and improvements and investments in our roads network, which we obviously are doing with the whole point of today's conversation was about those investments that we make and take very seriously. Um, to the extent that we also help to provide multimodal opportunities for our community, people who want to bike and walk, it does help take a little pressure off the roads network. So um, I think having a diverse set of options for how people move through our community, it helps us be a strong and more resilient community. Any other questions? All right. We appreciate so much your attention to these important investments that we'll continue to be working on in the coming days and weeks. Thank you so much.